Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the two different ways that I style my hair. So how I curl it and how I use this Revlon One Step Styler to give myself a blowout, kind of if you will. So if you want to see step by step how I achieve my curled hairstyle and my straighter, sleeker, blow dried hairstyle, then you're in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. All right, let's start off with curling the hair. So what I like to do is work in two major sections, a top half and a bottom half. Obviously, I've already curled the bottom half here, but wanted to show you how I secure it. So I just take the top half of my hair, twist it into a bun and clip it back with a jaw clip like that, and then go ahead and work on the bottom half. Once that's done and I'm ready to take down this nice alfalfa bun, I will just remove that jaw clip and lower the top half of my hair. And then I will pull that into two sections on both sides of my head and go ahead and brush through it so that my curls are nice, nice, dropping everything per usual, so that my curls are nice and sleek looking and there's no tangles or knots. Then I'm taking a little bit of dry shampoo to soak up excess oils and also add a little bit of volume because my roots can definitely fall pretty flat. I talked about this dry shampoo in a recent video. I will link it below if you're interested. It is really good. Then I am ready to go ahead and heat protect my hair. So this is kind of a two in one for me because it's a heat protectant, but it also helps to make my hair last longer and help to maintain that curl longer throughout the day. Again, I talked about this in a recent video. So basically all of the products and all of the videos that you guys need to know about will be in the description box of this video if you're interested. This is from Tresemme, super affordable, and I swear by it for helping my hair to hold a curl. Then I'm using this Bumble and Bumble thickening treatment that I've also really been loving both for pre blow dry and pre curl and I'm putting a generous amount of this on my hair as well as that heat protectant it definitely does get a little bit damp but it's totally fine and ready to curl once I brush it through and just give it a couple minutes to dry I just want to make sure that I'm getting enough of that product all over my hair and that it's evenly covered now I am prepped and ready to curl. So what I will do is curl from back to front. I just find that that's easiest for me because then as I'm working, I can throw those fresh curls kind of behind my shoulders if I need to, and they won't get tangled up in with the rest of my hair. So I will take a piece towards the back of my head that's about two to three inches wide, and I will brush through that again if I need to so that my curls are nice and smooth. Then I will take my curling iron and clamp it towards the bottom head half of my hair as you can see here and I will give it one to two twists away from my face so I have a few inches of hair still hanging off of the end that's important because we'll continue to work that into the curling iron as we move up I will give it a few seconds and then again open up that clamp give it another one to two twists away from my face hold for a few seconds more and continue to work up that section of hair towards my roots. So as you can see, I am keeping that curling iron vertical so that my curl falls up and down. And as I am curling, I'm adding more hair so that it ends up stacking nicely on top of each other like this. And I have probably about one inch of hair, maybe two hanging out of the end there. I like to keep that out so that the curl doesn't go all the way through my ends. I do just kind of have that little straight piece at the end, which I really like. I think it makes it look a little bit PC. So that's the final curl. It's supposed to look like a tight ringlet like that at first because that's how we achieve the final look at the end. So don't brush through it. I know it looks a little bit funky, but that's how it's supposed to look. So now I take the next piece of hair, again, working towards the front of my head, grabbing a piece that's about two to three inches wide and I will brush through that, take my curling iron and follow the same exact steps. So clamp it towards the bottom half, twist away from my face with a good amount still hanging out of the end of the wand, hold it there for a few seconds, hold it as vertical as possible. I don't know what that diagonal action is for me there. Hold it more vertical than me, be better. <laughs> and I continue to add more hair in. So I will just open that clamp after a few seconds, pull a little bit more hair into the wand as I'm twisting away and it will just work towards the top of your head. Again, I'm making sure that the hair is not directly on top of each other on the curling iron. Yes, this is damaging more of your hair, but it's also applying more heat to actually hold that curl. And then again, keeping, mm, that's a long piece. I'm getting aggressive here with my measurements. 
I would say I leave like one to two and a half inches out, but right there that looks probably closer to three. <laughs> so I'm not super precise with it, which I actually find makes for a better look at the end. It just makes it a little less structured, which is what I prefer. And that is literally it. So not complicated, I promise. Once you practice this technique a couple of times, it's super easy to achieve. Once I'm done with that section of my hair, I will go ahead and apply a generous amount of hairspray again before combing through it at all, so while it still looks like Shirley Temple. Also, if you're wondering, yes, this ugly hairspray face is required if you're going to do this technique. Oh my gosh, what is that? Okay, this is the Big Sexy Hairspray. I do like it. I'm not sure if I'm obsessed with it yet, so I'm going to keep playing around with it with other products. I'll keep you guys posted, stay tuned. But then I go ahead and curl the other half of my hair, voila, and this is what we end up with. Now I'm ready for a highly advanced, highly professional technique that I like to call the zhuzh. This is not for beginners. Don't try this at home. Obviously kidding. As you can see, I'm literally just zhuzhing my hair, if you will. So floofing it around, I don't even know what to call this other than a zhuzh, but lightly finger combing through it, but not pulling my fingers all the way through the ends of the curls. I'm really just shaking the curls, throwing them together, tousling them around, and that helps to loosen them. If I do have any sections like this that stuck together a little bit from the hairspray, I will take my brush just on that section to loosen the hairspray so that it's not stuck together, but I'm not taking a brush through all of my curls because for me at least, that really loosens them too much and then my hair doesn't stick stay as curled for as long as I would like to. So I continue to go through any sections that are stuck together and zhuzh my hair. A floof, a zhuzh, a toss, you guys can see. And we're not done yet. This is going to get even more technical, so you're going to need to stand up, yep, nice, flip your head over, and do even more zhuzhing. This is actually really important for me because it helps to create lift and volume at the roots, whereas the other zhuzh that we were just doing, oh my gosh, I sound ridiculous, is more so just fluffing up the base of the curls. So that helps to create that all over lift, and it looks really crazy, as you can see right here. It's like, oh my gosh, how's this gonna work? But I promise it comes together, so I just continue continue to lightly finger comb through, adjust my hair, and then it just settles like this. It's magic, you guys, I'm telling you. This is my magic hair curling tutorial. I end up with these really pretty PC curls. I love them. I feel like I have finally found the curling technique that works for me, that I'm obsessed with. So give it a try. I hope you guys love it. Let me know in the comments below if you do end up trying this at home, what you think, and if it's your new favorite curling technique as well. Yay. Okay, styling technique number two, the Revlon One Step Styler. So I let my hair air dry about 80 to 90% of the way. As you can see here, it's almost fully dry. I've just found I achieved the best result in the easiest way by doing that first. I have tried to use it on completely wet hair. It's a tangly mess, especially with long hair. So here, I apparently feel like I need to show you every strand of hair on my head. Um, yeah, so you can see kind of, there is still a bit of dampness in my hair. It's not completely dry. It's not wet. All right, moving on, you guys get it. So I have some face framing slash layers that I like to style first. You could also do this first with bangs, but I will just brush through those and then I will wrap them around the One Step Styler away from my face. And then what I like to do with that styler is actually use it to kind of lift up. So this will create some root lift. And then I also am making sure to twist it away from the face so that it flips the ends of my hair. So as you can see here, I'm using that to brush through the ends and also towards the roots as well to add that volume that I was talking about. So I will just do that back and forth a few times. And then what I will actually do is go old school and secure this back with some rollers. So I specifically do this to this part of my hair because I want the most lift towards the very front of my face. And again, this part of my hair really falls flat. I mean, honestly, I could do this to my full head of hair, but 
I'm too lazy. And also I think my hair is actually too long for that. So I will twist this back into two separate rollers just on either side of my part. And I like to do that first so that it has enough time to kind of sit and cook on that roller, if you will, and add a good amount of lift. So I make sure to do this after I use that Revlon One Step Styler because then it is still warm and that will help to create more volume. So nice, make sure you look like George Washington, okay? That's also required, great. So now we are ready for the rest of the hair and honestly, this is so easy and I don't really have a specific technique that I follow, which I feel like makes it easier because it's kind of foolproof. So what I will do is just start off by kind of using this as a brush and to help to dry those areas of my hair that are still wet in a way that is sleeker and straighter. So I will just pretty much grab as much hair as I can on each side of my head, brush through it from a few different angles, and then I will start to kind of curve the ends of it to create that flip. So I prefer to have the ends of my hair flip in towards my face. So as you can see here, I will start to turn that round brush away from my face to create the effect of the ends flipping inwards. So I will start off by using large chunks of hair and then I will kind of work my way down and separate into smaller sections. Again, there's no specific technique here, but I just find that that works best for me to kind of work with all of the hair together at first to get it to kind of to start to style in the direction that I want. And then I will start to use smaller sections to focus more on that hair flipping, if that makes sense. You can see here, I'm really using that as a round brush, twisting it away from my face. I'm not holding it there for super long or anything, but I just try to work through that entire section of hair from root to ends. And then sometimes I will twist it up like you saw there towards my face. But again, I'm not holding it there for a long period of time. This thing gets really hot, so you wanna be careful not to fry your hair off with it. Like it gets very hot and can get a little bit smoky if you hold your hair up in that position for too long. So it's like a couple seconds and then I let it go. Sometimes it gets stuck like you just saw there. So that's another reason why I like to make sure that my hair is not super wet when I do this or I just find that it gets really tangly for me. So as I'm brushing through it, I don't have a specific way that I brush. I kind of will do it front to back, doesn't matter. But then I pretty much am always using the same technique when I'm trying to style the ends here and twisting it away from the face. And that's literally it. It's honestly so easy, you guys. I feel like you just can't mess this up. It's pretty much just a large brush with a blow dryer attached to it. I love the little flip that it gives to the ends of my hair and it definitely makes my hair just look more put together and sleeker than it would if I just did a rough blow dry with a regular brush. Oh, it does just look so, so nice. I absolutely love this tool. Then once everything is as sleek and straight as I want it to be, I'm ready to remove these rollers and you'll be able to see the little touch of something something that that gives to those layers. I really love it for that area of the face. I think it's super pretty. Add something special, you know? Sometimes these rollers get stuck in my hair like that. Gotta give them a little tug, but it's okay, we make it work. And then I will just go ahead and brush through my hair and kind of just lift up the roots a little bit. So you can see there, I give it a little push. A slight zhuzh, if you will. Nothing like the hair curling. Mm -hmm. 
and then that technique is done as well. So I also did want to show you guys how I use this to restyle my hair. Unfortunately, I just don't have the kind of hair that's going to hold this straight flippy style, if you will, overnight, no matter what. I've tried to use a sleeping cap. I've tried to braid my hair, twist it, put it in a ponytail everything. It just, it, I don't have that kind of hair texture. So I do have to restyle it the next day if I want it to look like that again. And it's actually very easy to do. So I will just go ahead and use heat protectant again. Make sure that you're using heat protectant even on dry hair if you're going to go in with a heat styling tool again. As you can see, applying a generous amount of that, this will help to add shine, softness, make it more manageable, and then add that heat protection. And I do the same exact thing here as I do when I am first using that styling tool, so I won't repeat myself again, but I will just speed this up and let you guys watch it so you can see how truly quick and easy it is to restyle it. So that's everything for this video. Those are the two main ways that I've been styling my hair. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That really helps me out and supports my channel, but also I upload three to five days a week, so you definitely don't wanna miss out on my next video. I will make sure to link all of my recent hair care videos in the description box below if you're interested in more hair content from me. Other than that, if there's anything else that you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that request in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.